there was an earthquake in Haiti. Obviously, people right. are going to remember that. And there's just, I just have this instinct, like if something happens, I just have to go help. And I just, you know, I had the news on that one afternoon and I saw the earthquake happen and John came home from work and I'm like, John, I'm getting on the next airplane out and we're going to go help in Haiti. And he's like, can you just calm down here for a second? Because, you know, your heart's not well and we've got two boys here and what am I going to do without you for a week and will you ever come home? You know, he, and so, um, so I didn't go immediately. I went about six weeks after the earthquake happened. And I had the real blessing of serving the people um, of Haiti down in some hospital wards, yeah, the people that were still recovering. Thank you. Um, but while we were down there, some of the students, teenage students from the orphanage would come and help translate for us in the afternoons after school. And I developed this really sweet friendship with this little boy, and I say little boy, this preteen boy named John Mark at the time. And he loved Jesus. And one afternoon I said, John Mark, tell me your story. He goes, well, Miss Julie, he goes, my dad left my mom and my mom raised me and she did everything she could do to help raise me. But then my mama got sick. And when I was a young boy, she died and God brought me to this orphanage. And this is where I've spent, you know, most of my life, you know, and he was old enough to remember his mom. He was, you, I don't know how old he was when his mommy passed, but he had memories of his mama. And, and so I just, you know, the whole week, we would just banter back and forth. We were teaching him slang language. We were, you know, having a good old time with John Mark. Well, one afternoon, he comes in after school, and he's got his earbuds in his ears, and he is just singing praise music out loud. And it's a squeaky voice, right? Because he's like 12 years old, 13 years old, and he's got the voice changes. And I just sat him walk and just watched him walk in. And I just got overwhelmed with this sensation because I was believing a lot of lies. I was believing a lot of lies at the time, though still trying to cling to God's word. And it over it overcome on me and I felt as if the Lord was saying, Hey Julie, you see that teen boy over there? He loves me. And you know what? Julie, I don't need you around for me to cause your boys to love me mm. and worship me. Because that's one of my fears is that I'll go and my kids won't know who I am, or I will not get to see them come to saving faith. Um, and I just love him so much. And as a mommy, you just want to watch your kids grow up. Um, but that moment was very, a very big moment of surrender for me, trusting my boys to the hand of God who loves them more than I could ever love them.